Merry Christmas, everybody. Hopefully this gets uploaded on Christmas Day. I am Dejimon11, and with me are my two good friends here to spend the holidays with me. Jova Hexion. Yes. And Pedro the Other Reindeer. This is not going to be lit. <laughs> and today, in the spirit of holidays, we decided to do a podcast covering a Christmas movie. One that just released in October. <laughs> or, again, not I, in Christmas. Again, wait, I mean, wait, I'm, wait. I'm, wait, please tell me it was around Halloween time, just like the <laughs> Nutcracker was with Disney. I'm pretty convinced that the reason that movie was released on October is because Disney realized uh, that what the, the shit show they had on their hands. So they think, yeah, let's just make Encanto our Disney Plus. Oh, uh, it, it was November twelfth, but still. Jesus oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, November well whatever. 12th, November. So. The still, it's, my point still stands. It's. It, I, yeah. I, I'm, I think it's pretty obvious what happened here. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, honestly, Today, no. I have no idea. What happened with this movie? I don't get who okayed the idea behind this movie. I don't even really get why they thought this one was a particular idea. Like, we've seen Disney really screw the pooch here, but not often to this level. Well, unless you talk about Bob Shapek and the Disney parks. Yeah. Today, we're doing Home Sweet Home Alone. So, uh, AKA Home Alone I, I, we're, we're, we're not going to sugarcoat this movie was trash. Holy crap. The only reason why I did it is because a friend suggested you should do a podcast on it because of how bad it is. And I heard Pedro say it's terrible. Yeah. <sighs> okay. And that's, so and that's basically like why we're here. Let me put it like this. Disney have done stupid stuff. Like the Cruella remake, Maleficent the Mistress of Evil. Again, everything to do with the Disney parks in recent years, which may or may not be why Bob Shapek may be getting fired and replaced with Bob Iger of all people. But this, this was is... Bob Iger. Bob Iger announced this film back in 2019. Seriously? Yes, I'm looking at Wikipedia right now. It's a production on August 6, 2019. Like, I don't even remember this thing being announced, but holy I cow. Do, I do. I re- even remember Macaulay Culkin saying, you know, put, putting out a joke pitch and said, Disney, hire me. And uh, they didn't hire him. They hired his brother. Or his character's brother, anyway. Who is, who is currently in jail. Topical. So, <laughs> anyway, though, let me put it like this, though. I mean this without any exaggeration. This may be one of the worst things that Disney has done. Pretty much revive a franchise that was finally, finally getting some rest after Home Alone 5. Brought it back from the dead and, well... To say they bastardized it would be kind of an understatement, because, wow, this is trash. Okay, let me point out the overall big problem, and the thing that makes this Home Alone movie stand out from the other ones. The quote-unquote bad guys are actually closer to being the protagonists and good guys of this yeah, movie. Yeah, we'll, well, we'll get to it. Let's just... Might as well get through it. All right, the, so is there anything the we need to get out of the way before we get to the plot? Yeah, yeah I just need to know, what's your initial thoughts? G- g- give your initial thoughts on this. Uh, Jovo, you go first. My initial thoughts, do you mean what I thought of this before watching it or, well, after watching it? Just after, after your fir- watching Your it. first impressions right after the credits yeah. roll. It's terrible. It's one of the worst movies I've seen in recent years, and yet... I don't know. Maybe it's because I knew what to expect thanks to a lot of outrage from uh, friends like Pedro and Dej. But, man, even seeing it, I just could not bother to muster emotion of reaction to it. Oh, sure, don't get me wrong. It's terrible, but it's just like, it's kind of one that leaves, it left me feeling more tired and just, huh, that happened. They seriously went to the lowest common denominator. But it's just not outrage. Maybe it's because I'm not surprised that Disney can unfortunately stoop to such lows. Or maybe I was just so stunned that even knowing the lows Disney can sink to you, this one felt kind of unbelievable with how bad it was. For me, it's just like I was so stuck. I was expecting it to be bad, even terrible, but I wasn't expecting it to be this bad. And it's not a single fucking line of dialogue in this movie works. 
Every you know, scene. you know, you know. It's funny you say that, Joa. Do you want to know who's behind this movie? Who? The director of Dirty Grandpa, that Robert De Niro movie. Oh, and that the, explains a lot. And it's written by two SNL writers. Okay, Yay. look, look, look. SNL can still have its good moments. So it's modern SNL, Jova. It can still have its good moments. That said, yeah, so far. Hold between. on. That said, it ain't perfect. So, I mean, I've, I've always it. been more. I've always been more of, of a math TV guy myself. I'll just say this right now. So, telling me an SNL writer wrote this or that? Two. That, yeah, that can pretty much mean either a good time or a bad time with how much of a lottery shot it is with modern day SNL. So, so that part doesn't phase me as much. Heck, not even the dirty grandpa stuff phases me because uh, it all makes an awful lot of sense. That said, sure, yes. That, uh, that describing the quality of the film makes sense. Again, what I don't get is how... The, the the ideas for this movie got greenlit. Yeah, as for me, it's just what like I said, it's one of it, it's it's horrible. It's an absolute atrocity of a movie because from a screenwriting standpoint, this movie is a complete unmitigated disaster. Oh my I think god! The, there's only like one thing this movie maybe does good, and that's maybe explaining. Why certain bouts of its plot? Not even the whole plot, because a lot of it is idiotic excuses, but some of the reasons for why the kid can't get in touch with his parents or why the police don't respond are kind of like, I'd say, the only... Honestly... Having a semblance of credibility or even cleverness. Everything else is just bone-dead stupid. Honestly, I don't. I still don't buy it. I mean, can you honestly tell me that this kid uh, doesn't have a cell phone? Because kid, t- ten-year-olds nowadays have cell phones. That, that's just okay. Like I said, components of it. I wasn't even talking about the whole plot. I'm talking about certain bouts here and there. Whatever. The point is, okay. So let's, let's just. just... To the plots not. Oh well, I didn't get my faults. Oh yeah, okay, sorry. Go, go ahead, Dutch. Go on, Dutch. Uh, yeah, it's boring. I did not like it. I only laughed at the end because of how undeserving that ending is, and they present this as like, "Isn't this happy?" Like, no, oh. no, you're up, uh, you're insane. <laughs> I'll admit, while this movie didn't break me, I had a field day pretty much calling the plot out as it went along. Especially that saccharine sweet ending. Alright, go ahead. Go ahead, Pedro. This time, instead Uh, of me, it'll be Pedro giving the plot synopsis. So, Pedro, go ahead. So, here's what happens. It starts off like you usually expect. It starts off in Chicago, and you have this fa- this specific mom. Uh, this time she's a, it's both a British mom and a British kid. Okay. Um, Although the dad seems to be American, I think. Yeah, and I think it's the guy from um, from Scrubs. I think. Um, no, 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 no. That that's not the dad. That's the uncle, but he's not from Scrubs. Oh, so uh, he's just a comedian. It's the uncle. We don't, we don't see the dad. No, 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 no! I'm pretty sure we do see the dad, including at the end, because whatever he's the at dad the is table. No, no, Max is dad. No, we don't. No, whatever. No, I'm the... pretty sure we do. Because I'm Jova. Guy... I'm telling you, we don't. I literally just saw the movie today. Whatever. Uh, the red, the dad is not relevant anyway. So the basic point is yes. Um, they're so yeah. The, he, they immediately start on the car, and the kid has to take a pee. Okay. That's fine. That's fair. And then he starts fucking obnoxiously pastoring the mom because that he wants to pee. And she decides, you know, and, 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 and the way he treats his mom is so mean. Like, like this kid is a sh- an annoying shithead, which already is your first red flag. Because I remind you, let me remind you, this is a Home Alone movie, meaning you're supposed to be rooting for this kid. Forgot the movie, so yeah, already from the beginning, this movie's getting something wrong, you know. Um, then the mom decides, oh, there's this house that's being sold. Let's pretend to 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 buy this house just so you can t- use the bathroom. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Okay, so the mom is not exactly uh, is, is not exactly a, p- a p- peachy eater, but yeah, they get into the house, and this fa- this is a family that's basically uh, a couple who's trying to sell this house 
because apparently they they they're like they have they're kind of down on money, and they need to sell the sell the house, which is of course something that uh, it's a bit sad for them because they really like this house. Mm-hmm. So that, so they're taking stuff out, and then the kid finds uh, the place where he's taking out all of his mom's dolls, and one of them is a doll that has an upside down head. Which is fine, I guess. And then the kid once again asks him, "Oh, well, uh, are you a grown man playing with your dollies or something along those lines?" Like, I'm not kidding you. The kid starts making fun of of the of the dude. Of, um, oh yeah, he calls him Frankenstein for starters. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you look like Frankenstein. And Although, then the mom, and then, and then the mo- even the mother joins in on. Yeah, that yeah, like, yeah. I was about to say. He says, he looks like Frankenstein. Uh, honey, come on. He doesn't look like Frankenstein. He looks like Frankenstein's monster. And he's like, okay, no, I see where the kid gets it from, clearly. Yeah, like, okay, yeah. Here's the major problem with the movie. Its cast of characters range from unbelievably unlikable at worst to uh, annoying at best. Except for maybe the... M- well, yeah, um, the main couple who are trying to sell their house here and there. I'd say they're kids as well, but their kids barely feature in this movie. Despite yeah. the movie trying to convince us that part of the movie is about their relationship with their kids. Yeah. So, yeah, th- clearly this movie is off to a good start where the characters we're supposed to like are fucking uh, horrible people. Who- Let me put it like this. The mother and the son... Both make Kevin and his mother from the original two Home Alone movies look absolutely pristine by comparison. And mind you, Kevin all was right, already so. Kevin was already a relatively likable kid, but he did have a bit of those quirks that can make little kids annoying. No, As here's for the thing. His mother, well, wait, wait, we wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let me just, I just want to correct it something for, for Pedro. So it's fine for a character. Characters don't have to be like likable. Oh, you just have to have uh, like good people, but you just have to have some qualities that make you them endearing. Because we it, just it, saw Inception it, last week. No, see, see, here's the thing. It's not even necessarily that ditch. See, here's the thing. Yes, characters can be unlike be, can be bad people. The difference is that okay, and yeah, and yes, like yourself said, Inception does the incredible tough job of making you root for characters who are technically bad people. The difference is that if you do that, you have to make sure they have, re- like you said, relatable issues that you can relate to on some level, even if you disagree with their lifestyle or methods or whatever, you can still understand them. Problem is, this kid is doesn't have anything like that. Kevin was a relatable kid because he had redeemable qualities, and you could understand things from his perspective. And not to mention the fact that he's a kid, so of course he's going to have be kind of a shithead at points. This kid is beyond that. This kid is just rotten to the core. He like, has seriously. some of the qualities of a sociopath, no less. And mind you, his excuse is that he feels too crammed at home. Not just that. Okay, so basically, what happens? Uh, they leave after taking a piss. Okay, thank you, movie, for that. Uh, that was an, uh, so. Let me let, let me just recap for a moment, real quick. We had a detour to take a piss and to insult on one of the least uh, on, on the least uh, annoying characters in the movie. Yeah, we're, clearly, to we're off fair, to a good start. To be fair, the other reason for that is to sort of set off later a plot point regarding oh, yeah. the doll. Oh yeah, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. The point is, yes. So yeah. While this is going on, the parents of the, this new these new neighbors, like uh, I forgot their names. The the, the point is the, the 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 guys who are going to be the ones intruding on um, on the kids' house. Turns out there are some decently nice group of people who who you know just want to try their best to provide a good life for their kids. Problem is. Well, the problem is the movie doesn't do itself any favors even with these two because like Jova said at best characters are annoying and why are these two annoying despite being technically good people because their jokes are not funny and that becomes of course the primary problem with this movie the jokes aren't funny basically the two characters are Jeff played by Rob Delaney and Pam played by Ellie Kemper here okay what's uh, their bas- last name so I can name them properly for the characters you mean uh, Mackenzie yes. Okay, the, so the Mackenzies are a decent couple, but 
the uh, but um jeff's joke is that he's a cloud manager or whatever and he's constantly talking about the cloud this the cloud that and basically this. jeff's joke is supposed to be that oh he is a guy who's out of touch and behind the times because you see oh it's no longer about physical storage it's now about stuff all being in the cloud and all that pam's thing is that she's usually a well, that she's usually normal until the events of this movie, I guess, where she starts to become more daring. Yeah, it's weird. The point is, yeah. So, okay, that's fine. Later in the night, uh, Jeff is, you know, browsing at random, and then he goes on U uh, on eBay. Why? Because the mom, like, as in Max's mom, actually told him that apparently that toy is kind of a rarity of sorts. So and it could Jeff help says, them manage to save the money and win the farm. Oh, sorry, so sorry. I got that mixed up with pretty much every other cliche plot. Ahem, let me cross this out here. Ahem, make enough money off of the doll, which will supposedly sell for like 200000 something on eBay, and that will help them make enough money to save the house. So yeah, he's a scalpeler. Well, okay. No, no, that's not so much that. It's more so the fact that there was only 10 dolls like this that were ever made, meaning this toy is obviously an incredibly valuable collector's item. The, so obviously you can sell it on eBay for a, an exorbitant amount of money, which is fair. Uh, to this day, there are still copies of Action Comics number one that are still being sold for like $10 million. It's I'm also the fact that it's a doll with a rare defect. Like, you'd be surprised a lot of collectors go gaga over toys that have these oh, yeah. certain historical defects. Yeah, I, I'm, an, I, I'm an amiibo collector, I know. Sure. So the basic point is this. So he decides, holy crap, I can, I, we can save our house thanks to this doll. So he goes back to the box with all the dolls, and suddenly the doll is not there anymore. And then he realized, oh my god, so... So he takes the conclusion that, well, okay, this kid probably stole my doll. He was the, aside from my family, he was the only one here. Um, aside from that, yes. So yeah, this becomes a big problem because as we saw, he's also being visited by his brother, his wife, and uh, their son. And oh, oh and, by and the way, they are obnoxious. Especially the brother. The brother literally froze at a, a, a snowball to Jess's face twice like uh, again I get uh, again I get that in America but people like to have snowball fights because there's actually snow over there not so much over here but still like seriously if, if my brother threw me a snowball uh, without even any kind of warning or anything ah, I would get angry at him like just, hey, that's, Pedro, just, that's just dickish it may please you to know that the actress playing um the annoying brothers' wife is Allie Mackey, fresh out of Toy Story 4, where she was Giggle McDumples. Who's Giggle McDumples? Uh, yeah, what you, what that you said. The no, I, I'm, I'm literally just, Wait, was she the toy that that way he gave his voice box to, or someone uh, else? No, 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 no. The um, the little the little cop doll that uh, is is um Betty Boop's assist Betty Boo's assistant. Pretty oh, Bo Peep's Oh, yeah. Bo, Bo Peep. Sure. That's it. That's it. Bo Peep. I don't know what's Also, happening. also, also. Should <laughs> mention that this cast is, well, kind of a bit sad because they got some really good talent. Archie Yates. Well, okay. Maybe not so much Archie Yates. He's uh, one starting up. But you have Rob Delaney, Ellie Kemper, Aisling B, Keenan Thompson. The girl from Kimmy and Schmidt. Yes, and they also got Keenan freaking Thompson as the real estate agent who... Kind of gets pretty underutilized in this movie, sadly. And so, then you yeah. Got, you just sucked the money and ran. And then you got so, Tim yeah. Simmons as Hunter McKenzie, Jessup Noxus, and apparently successful brother. Pete Holmes, they even got the legendary Jim Rash in this movie for a scene. So, yeah, the, so yeah, the poor McKenzies are not only stuck with terrible relatives but also the fact that they don't have the money and of course the doll has been stolen so af shortly after he decides to tell that to oh and in, well, in the meantime this is going on we have of course the obligatory scene where there's a shit ton of people in max's house meaning he's trying to get someone's attention but of course once again the mom is not really paying much attention to him because she's busy dealing with the preparations for the traveling and that's it. Like it's, it's unlike with the first two movies. It's not. There's not even a genuine argument. Nobody actually mistreats them in any way. It's just that you know they're busy, so of course they can't you know 
focus on him right now. Just wait a bit, please, honey. And, and it yet, doesn't help that he's kind of a bit rude himself. Now, granted, I get it. He's sick of the noise and... Well, okay, I hate to say it. For, for, for all his complaining... So, okay, here's the first problem about his complaining. When we first hear his complaining, it's before we actually see how his family treats him. With, when Kevin complained about his family treated him, that was after we got to see that, yes, they were crapped him. Here, it's pretty much done at the start of the film when they're driving up to the house for him to take a piss in. Essentially, he's complaining about how, oh, I hate having my cousins around because Not I don't have that. enough room and, oh, I can't play the video game. Granted, apparently he was waiting for his turn here and there, so... According to the movie, he does have that problem to do. That said, compared to what Kevin... Hell, compared even to what the kid in Home Alone 3 had to deal with, I have to say this. Poor rich baby with a silver spoon in his mouth. I know, right? Oh. I know, right? Not to mention... Not to mention... Uh, one particular... I bet this is technically inconsequential, but I have to mention it because of how bizarre it is. There's a point in that sequence where he bu accidentally... Ac and I want to underline, accidentally bumps into his sister. A common everyday occurrence you have. <laughs> oh, that bit, go on. And, and her reply is, I shit you not, uh, uh, buzz off, perv, I'm your sister. And I'm like, what? And like, he just tapped her on the shoulder at best. Like, what? That's all he, what? yeah. Like, what the fuck was that, perv? All he did was slightly bump into you. Okay, okay. What the so fuck? I who the fuck I, wrote this crap? You know, I do have to feel sorry for Archie Yates who plays the kid. This is technically his second movie, like, ever. His first one was Jojo Rabbit, which I've heard people say was a great yeah, movie. Yeah, I heard, yeah, I was so that movie's he can, good. So hopefully he can stay afloat, but man, this is one that's looking pretty bad for his resume because, oh god, okay. Not only is the kid terrible, but in order to make it possible to have any semblance of sympathizing with him you have to make his family even more obnoxious oh don't get me wrong the kid's terrible but the family Ugh. let me just pretty much summarize all the dialogue for the family here oh i hate you oh you're a pervert oh modern speak modern speak modern speak modern speak We're how do you do days. fellow kids yeah that's basically the writing of this movie in a nutshell I, we I don't swear. know how to write dialogue. We I don't, swear. We just saw people saying random words, and we didn't know how to put them into sentences. Like Uber, so, oh, texting. Wow, sorry. That was, um, that was, uh... Well, honestly, I get where this is coming from. This may be the most pandered I felt to in a movie for quite some time. Maybe not the most pandered I felt in any movie whatsoever, but god damn. Like, for people who... Uh, are supposedly trying to sympathize with us, they feel like they don't know what the hell they're saying. Exactly. So continuing on with that. Um, at the same time that this... So what does he do? He decides to go take a nap in her mom's car? Where he yes, watches Robert and Wally Coyote. So did yeah, Disney yeah, have to yeah, pay yeah, Warner uh, Brothers for that? Which, no, again, like kind of baffles me because if you wanted some kind of funny cartoon short, why not bust out one of the old 1940s Goofy shorts? That would have been uh, yeah, I, like, like Like I said earlier, it's probably... Be, uh, am I early? I mean off mic. It's probably because they didn't, they didn't want to feel self-indulgent. So I they guess. paid yeah. Warner Brothers yeah. to... You. So they paid Warner Brothers... To, they, they must have had to have paid Warner Brothers for that. Let me I mean, don't... No, don't Honestly, I, I like Rover and Wally Coyote. It's just, I don't yeah, know. Okay. I feel like, I don't know. If if it was a goofy short, I wouldn't have minded personally. I I <laughs> feel like the Looney the OG, original Looney Tunes shorts held up better than the Disney ones anyway. Yeah, mm, I can agree with that. Depends on which ones you ask. The Mickey ones, I can get you. I will. I'll argue the goofy shorts are still really hilarious to this day. Um, I, I do like some of the Mickey ones, though I'll, I'll admit, when it comes to Mickey shorts, I think my favorite ones are from the era of the House of Mouse, where they could be definitely, oh, definitely. their most zany, essentially. Hey, Disney, maybe you should well, re-release House of Mouse on Disney Plus I don't know. of whatever I, this was. I, I, I don't know, Joe. I think the modern ones that we've been having since 2014, those are definitely the more zany ones. The insanity that goes on in those shorts, jeez. No, 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 but, Pedro, do you remember how crazy the ones in the House of Mouse stuff could get? Those, okay, okay. You know, let's not veer too much off topic, though, because, yes, 
he falls asleep in the car. That yes. is a, well, that is part of the reason he gets left behind. They do set up that apparently due to a kerfuffle going on at the airport, the huge ginormous family are separated in two different flights essentially, which will also help set things into motion. That being said, Nether Jova, ends up going on the earlier half flight essentially. And while you're at and while we're at it, Jova, here, how about this? Here, let's take a let's take a selfie while I hold this movie's poster. Hashtag uh. Hill Judged. Yeah, that's this mo- that, 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 yeah, you know what? That's this movie summed up in one word. Hashtag ill-judged. Yep, that's pretty much the whole movie. Thank you. <laughs> pretty much. So anyway, like Pedro mentioned, the guy figures out that the toys were for fortune, so he goes off to go get the doll because he believes that the kid stole the doll. So, okay. Apparently this is another one of those cases where the trailer may have misled us with where things were going. That said, I'll just ask this. Who else was able to pretty much predict how stuff would turn out regarding the missing doll? Because the moment I saw it in the actual movie, I was like, Oh my god, I can tell exactly how this is going to go. And not me. Gonna I, like I, I, I actually didn't see the trailer. I just saw the movie completely blind. Uh, so so I, uh, I, I was told about this in advance, so I, I was like, okay. Sure, okay. for me, to, well, we'll get to it. We'll get to the plot twist. The point is, yes... So so Max is left home alone. <laughs> and so, ironically enough, it's when it's while it's while the dad is there here. See, apparently the other half of the family that is yet to leave assumes that Max must be with his mother because they didn't find him anywhere in the house. Which means that they didn't check the garage just to be safe. Cause nah, there's no way she'd leave her own son behind. Brilliant. Okay. So uh, in the meantime, Jeff, of course, tries to kind of break into Max's house uh, on his Because the family on literally mentioned the code to the alarm, which Jeff yeah. still manages to botch for some reason because it's an incredibly easy one. 1-1-2. One, one, Yet at some point, yeah, he, fam- he mistakenly punches in 2-2-1, two, two, even though later in the movie he remembers properly that it's 1-1-2. One, one, so... Yeah. And for I some reason, okay, okay, yeah, and unfortunately he's not able to get in because there's an alarm that goes off, so he decides to run away. And, and I'm going to call Pam. I got to call Pam, and of course, a lot of bad jokes go on, but if, if I'm going to complain about every single bad joke, we'll be here all night. So, moving uh, yeah. on. Um, okay, after this, he goes to a place with Pam where they're ringing bells, for, and for some reason, Gyro Gear Loose from DuckTales is there. I am... <laughs> You mean Jim Rash? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. What I, like, why? What, what are you doing here, dude? The, 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 like I <laughs> said, the cast of this movie was too good for this movie. So yeah, basically, Jeff tells them about what's happening and how they can get a shit ton of money to save themselves. And but Pam, being the, I guess the good, I guess the the reasonable person of this family, decides no, we can't do that. But then later on. When they're having a, a nice little moment with the kids having fun and she starts getting nostalgic, <sighs> the movie starts playing somewhere in my memory. Okay, you, okay, actually, actually, yeah, can, you, can, you, can you, I say, wait, no, this this needs to be pointed out. When Max finds out that he's home alone, roll credits, uh, they're playing a ripoff version of that song. So I'm just like, why didn't you just play that song at that point as well? Because they didn't want to be... Well, Dwid, Edge, we don't want to rip off the original Home Alone now, do we? Oh, can, can we also talk about how when... uh uh, I'm sorry, what, what's the name of the other mom? Um, the which other, uh, Pam. One, uh, Pam. Pam. I, yeah, her brother-in-law was yeah. uh, was watching a movie with her, with her, her his nephew. Uh, it was like, I don't know why they keep remaking the originals. So, so it's not really going to work, or something along that line. It's like remake yep. suck. Yeah, yeah, no, shut up. You don't get don't. to. You don't get to talk. But don't you see, no. guys? This isn't a remake. It's a sequel. It's, may, again, again. What's up with twenty twenty one and movies? Who are, who are so hypocritical with their messaging? So are but, we talking about Home Sweet Home Alone or The Matrix Resurrections? Both. Dead, dead, but dead, that's dead, a, dead. Dead. Where did the movie touch you mentally? Anyway, 
Okay, so yeah, the movie starts playing Somewhere in My Memory, aka the main theme of this movie. The, specifically, the vocal version, which is called Somewhere in My Memory, and it's performed by, I think, some kind of choir. I forgot if there's an actual name. But the point is, it's Somewhere in My Memory, the song from and the then pre- that Sean Williams... And goes crazy. Yeah, John Williams wrote this song for the first two movies. So yeah, and again... Oh, did they get John uh, Williams uh, uh, the only re- for this movie? No, it's John Debney. Um, so, okay. Uh, first, my immediate reaction was, no. Fuck you, movie. You haven't even come close to earning the right to play this song. Fuck off. And yeah, like Jova just said, Pam, for whatever reason, goes nuts and loses whatever reason she had and decides to, you know what? No, fuck it. We're going to go steal that doll. And you know what's interesting thing? Now I have to once again come on to one of the biggest problems of this movie. The only reason this movie is even happening is because the characters are morons. Here's what you could have done. Bang on the door and calmly talk to the kid, explain the situation and ask him to give back the doll. But no. Granted, granted. Pl- and okay, to their credit, at this point, they don't know that Max is there. Like, as far as they know, the house is supposed to be empty. Oh, sure, and, whatever. And that doesn't... Sure, I'll regain... I'll re- restart my complaint when it actually becomes relevant then. So yeah, they go straight into the house because they think it's empty. I forgot about that detail. So, unfortunately, when they do get in, they realize that there's a kid in there, and the kid uh, talks to his home bot. I'm guessing it's supposed to be Alexa, but we can't afford to pay copyrights for Ale- for mentioning Alexa in here, so it's home bot. And it's speaking um, in German because somebody left it on German, and and the- they and they think and they think it's his grandma, <laughs> who supposedly speaks German in an obviously robotic tone. Like wow, uh, wow, an American dad. British mom and and son and the German grandma. That's quite the diversity on this family. But, uh, okay. So, what happens is, of course, they get caught and they just get to... Look, we just want to talk, but then the kid, of course... The problem is, the kid, aka Max, he overhears their talk thinking, oh, we have to kidnap the ugly boy. As in, the doll with the upside of that song. The problem is, Max only hears part of the conversation, so he thinks that they're trying to kidnap him... And, of course, the fact that he call him ugly. So, yeah. Great, this is all just a big misunderstanding. Oh, God. And it's misunderstanding after misunderstanding in some of the most convenient ways possible. Because, essentially, yeah. so, okay, to give the kid credit, he actually does try to contact the police. Okay, good for him. Problem is that, well, he can't really because the house doesn't have landlines. Because, as the movie puts it, <clears throat> nobody uses landlines anymore. Like, okay, look. I get it. Technology moves on, marches onward and whatnot. And I'm not quite sure if this movie was trying to techno shame or whatnot. Because, honestly, it ain't clear half the time. That being said, no. Just, no. There are plenty of houses that still do use landlines. I get maybe pay phones, but landlines are still a common enough thing. I guess they, you could assume that the family is just all into that here and there because they're rich and gotta be heard or the most advanced stuff. But in that case, why didn't you give the son his own smartphone or whatnot to have then? Just in case of something like this. Yep. Because in that case, so. you kind of look like fools for not putting in a landline. Basically, yeah. So, yeah, basically because of this, they decide to retreat and basically just make some better planning. In the meantime... This is also the scene where, again, they trip the alarm. Again, because for some reason, Jeff forgets that it's 112 and instead puts in 221. You see, Joe, the the fact that he's a completely idiotic moron makes him an endearing character somehow. Oh, but it's about to get better because the alarm actually does bring the police here. And it's and where we get is? our big cameo. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Buzz. Yes, the Buzz from the first two movies returns this time as a cop. And yeah, like that you said, uh, yeah, like that the, like that you said, the actor recently got arrested. Uh, um, so, but whatever, we're not here to talk about that. The point Fun is, in fact, actually, um, back in April twenty two, I'm sorry, back in April twenty twenty. 
it was reported that McKeeley Culkin, who played Kevin McAllister in the first two films, would reprise his role in a cameo. However, in October 2021, he denied his involvement in the film. Like, he wanted his hands clean of this mess, essentially. Basically, so, yeah. no, we will not be getting Kevin McAllister. However, it turns out that apparently the security system is a McAllister security system. Which, Hold on, let okay. Me... Yes. Okay. So, well, uh, well, let me, let me, uh, 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 let me, let me just to get to that point then. So, yeah, Buzz is called, yeah, I, I get that uh, Buzz is called, and yeah. Uh, of course, Pam managed to convince him that, oh, it's our anniversary and that this is actually their house. And Buzz just immediately buys into what she's saying without even bothering to check if she's telling the truth or not. Oh, great. G- great cop work, dude. But then again, this I is can- Buzz, so I guess I'm not too surprised. Yeah, and apparently it turns out that he and Kevin sort of have a bit of a running feud here, which will come into play later. But yeah, essentially they managed to convince the cop that this is their home. Meanwhile, Max is considering yelling out to the cop, but then he imagines that if the cops finds out that his mother left him home alone, that his mother would be put in jail, so now he can't go to the police at all. Because he believes his mother would be jailed. Indeed. How so. old is Max supposed to be? Like ten. Uh, Max is ten years old. Yes. I, I I get it, kid with an active imagination, but I don't know. I do feel like, dude, let me put, that's not how it works. Okay, okay, okay. she'd let me be fine. <laughs> so, okay, here's the problem with how people tend to write kids in, like when they're ten, eleven, or heck, even twelve. Sometimes people tend to write ten-year-olds like they're actually five-year-olds. Like, no, by the time you're ten, while you don't quite know the entire way of things, I argue by that by the time you're ten, you start to have a good enough grasp on stuff. You're like, you tend to get how stuff will be, and by the time you're 13, yeah, teenagerhood, so obviously. Still, though, like, for a ten-year-old, and for someone who's supposed to be as smart as he apparently is... He's kind of dumb. Yeah, basically. So, yeah. Uh, it's nice to know that even after they're adults, Buzz and Kevin still don't get along. How nice. Thanks, Because it turns out that, yes, it turns out the mother, when she realizes that uh, Max was Jova, Jova, alone, Jova, 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 Jova. Pedro's the one that's tell- telling the story. Sorry. I like, I, I don't want to be rude, but come on. Yeah. Basically, Building off of that, but you didn't need to go there. Fine, go on. Okay, so the basic point is this. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that happens. Nice, that was Buzz's cameo, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, again, it's not over because of the scene that establishes why the police can't come and help. Oh, yeah, true, I forgot. To be, yeah, basically, they just, oh, we're getting a little thing from the home bot. Oh, don't worry, that's just Kevin uh, prank calling. Because apparently Kevin does that all the time, according to Buzz. And also the Every fact year. that the sec- and apparently the fact that the security system is apparently made by a company run by Kevin, which is yeah, you know the what Alistair box or something like that. So yeah. you know what I can actually get that Kevin would want to get a job in home security, given you know his, his own fr- experiences. This is the- he he got he left home alone three times and had to deal with robbers. Pretty much, yeah. So I'm actually fine with that development. That said, this is why Buzz never even goes back to check the house because he assumes that it's a little prank played by the old trout sniffer, as he still calls him. So yeah, Max, of course. In, 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 this means that Pam and Jeff, of course, have to re re-strategize and come back on the next night, maybe. In the meantime, next day, Max has decided to go to church i think yeah church and that's they where, pretty and that's, much all go to church because their daughter is singing in a pageant or choir yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and then max uh is even talking about how oh all these toys that are for the needy for the for kids in need and he just like well i'm a kid in need maybe i should take one of these and i'm like <laughs> oh how <sighs> <sighs> How wonderfully likable! Like, uh, I, 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 can, 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 can we can we please have the wet Bennets come in and you know bite his fingers off one at a time, like like uh, me, Harry was going to do in the first movie? Please. Honestly, Jesus. I'm gonna get a bit ahead of things here. By the end of the movie, I was actually rooting for our supposed bad guys to kill that kid. 
Because, oh, he gets worse. But, but Pedro, we have such a heartfelt moment here because he tells the old woman that he's Pedro, all Pedro, alone. Pedro, uh, come on. No, no, sure. No, sure. Go on, yeah, go on, Joe. Okay. Well, yeah, You're I saying? mean, pr pretty much, yeah, we get, this is where we get our first scene about supposedly how Max isn't that bad a boy and how it turns out that he has already yeah. come to the realization that being home alone isn't that great. And the old woman mistakes this for thinking that his parents died, and so yeah. she gives him the toy. Brilliant, fucking brilliant movie. Oh, <laughs> you by see the way, you see, you see kids, pretend that you're a kid in need so you can get toys. That's a great lesson for the kids at home, isn't it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> So, no, yeah. no, no, you don't get to quit that easy, dads. That being said, this is also where another misunderstanding comes into play because Jeff and Pam see Max talking to the old woman and assume that she's the German grandmother, essentially. So Brilliant. they assume that with them here, they can go sneak into the house. And we get another yes. bout of escapades. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, basically that's basic. Uh, that's the basic gist of it. So the kid decides, okay, fine, and of course he starts preparing all the various traps and blah blah blah. Where in the meantime the Mackenzies, of course, start to prepare. Okay, we have to do it. Uh, and and Pam, like Jova said earlier, kind of starts going off the top and is actually the one encouraging for them to get through with this because uh, Jeff all uh, Jeff is kind of you know like a coward, so he's not doing it anymore. But yeah, all the stages are set for the primary iconic moments of all the Home Alone movies, the moments where the two people try to get into the house while the kid, of course, defends his house with traps. Nobody nobody cares because the story is terrible, but it's here. Honestly... Yeah, that's yeah, this this another thing about this movie. This movie is only yeah. 90 minutes long. Because the, the other movies were two hours long. Um, well, in fact, the, the second movie was two hours and, and 20 or, or something. I forgot how long it was. So... But this movie, because it's only 90 minutes long, it has little to no time to allow us to get to know the characters. But then again, considering the times that they do get us to know the characters, they're horrible people. So I guess I should. So I guess kudos for small favors. I guess. Um, that said, I I hate to say it, during the part with the traps, it kind of felt needlessly mean spirited when stuff was happening to the. Burglar is granted. I yeah, know I'll happens, get to it. But yeah. Yes. The point is, yes, everything is ready. Max is ready. The Mackenzie's are ready. And this, of course, is where the biggest problem of the movie comes into play. This is a Home Alone movie where the kid is an unlikable dickhead that you cannot possibly for your life root for. And yet, because he has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. And the Mackenzies are just a couple who are just trying to survive financially, and they just want something that it actually does indeed belong to them. So, why exactly am I supposed to find their suffering at Max's traps funny? Could someone please explain this to me? Supposedly, because it was the wrong thing of them to do. <sighs> <sighs> but it, but that yeah, that, that's the thing. Like I said before, now I, now my complaint comes into play. Why couldn't you just knock on the door and explain things to him, or even then, if, if he refuses to give you the doll, go to the police. It's your property. You have the right to demand your property to be given back to you. But no, of course, the, we have to have the characters act stupid for the sake of the plot. So And for those here wondering we go. why they don't just wait until the family come back home to ask for it, apparently that's because there's a deadline and this couple yes. has now made an offer on the house that they can't afford to turn down unless they have the dolls. So, of course, there's the deadline before the end of the year, as is typical of a Christmas movie. Of course. So, yeah... Of course, you all know. If you've seen any Home Alone movie, you already know how this shit just goes. Now, of course, they try to get along, uh, but of course, they try to get in the house. But of course, Max's traps stop them. They get hurt. They fall. They uh, Pam steps into Legos, which hurts like hell. Oh, wait, wait, wait! Um, That's after Max sets her feet literally on fire. Yeah, see, in the same way that Kevin set Harry's head on fire. Again, um, Harry was an absolute bug willing to kill a kid. The only time that Pam wants to kill that kid is after everything he's done. And honestly, I was almost there with her. 
Here's the big thing, everybody. Yes, comedy is derived from misery. But here's the thing. It's more complicated than just what those words is. There's more to it. What is, yes, misery. But it has to also involve karma. Uh, uh, these kinds of jokes only work in the first, in the previous movies, because the people getting hurt deserve it. Yeah, like, you know, for as bad as the Home Alone movies may have gotten, they always remembered... Make the bad guys unlikable enough to warrant what happens to them. And make the kid at least reasonable enough that we can root for him. Here, they're okay. Yes, I guess it's something different, but it's different in the worst way possible. The kid demonizing the adults, he may not be the bad guy, but he is unlikable as sin. As far as I'm, con I'm concerned, he is the villain of this movie, to be honest with you. I the mean, point I'm, I'm almost surprised that he literally didn't kill them, given... Yeah, no, 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 okay, look. These stunts make Home Alone 2s almost seem like they were done by a pacifist in comparison with how violent this movie is. Yeah, I'm like, jeez. And, and by the way... Whoa, whoa, whoa. These feel uh, like... Oh, God. It feels like something out of a borderline horror film because it's happening to the actual characters that we would be rooting for more than the kid. Because oh, so don't you just love how what they try? How? Wait, did they try to break in twice or? Okay. No? Oh. Okay, twice. Pedro, yes, uh, oh, oh. the first time they tried, it was that thing with the home bot that they thought it was a German grandma. Oh, we yeah. Don't, don't, don't you just love how when they the second time they they broke into the wrong house? They're, yeah, they're yeah I first. forgot. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, there's a joke where they first break into the wrong house, and for whatever reason, the people in that house have no no peripheral vision or hearing, Except so for they the don't baby. even. <laughs> you figure that one out. The only one who notices that they're drowning in that icy pool. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you, but here's the problem, yeah. everybody. The slapstick. The slapstick is not funny either because there's no comedic timing to any of this crap. Everything feels like either deriv derivative from the previous movies or just plain not impressive or creative at all. And as a result, the slapstick doesn't work either. It's it's just. Uh, it feels like the movie's just going for the motions, basically. Until, eventually, we get to a point where, um, finally, the, 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 both the McKenzie's and Max are head-to-head, -head, both of them with these weapons of sorts that have bull, uh, sorry, uh, pool balls in them. Oh, okay. and then, and, yeah. and then, and then, ladies and gentlemen, that's when Max says, no, I'm not uh, surrendering to you. You uh, are here to kidnap me. Wait, what? Yes, you said you wanted to kidnap the ugly boy. And that's when they realized, oh crap, you thought we were here to kidnap you. No, I'm sorry, we're just here to get our doll, that's it. And then here comes the stupid plot twist. Turns out, Max didn't take the doll. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I pretty- okay. The trailer seemed to suggest that he actually did take it, but when I actually saw the revelation, I was like, oh my god, they're totally setting this up. Because that's the thing, we never actually see him with yeah. the doll. So I was like, oh god. And, and don't you see, guys? So it turns out that Pam and Jeff did do a wrong here. They wrongfully tried to break and enter. But that's the thing, though. That's, uh, that's the thing, though. Like, yeah. So, so, so basically, what you're telling me is that there was no reason for this movie to even exist. Basically, what I hate about this is that it feels like the movie is cheating. Like, oh, you were rooting for these characters, but you shouldn't have because they were wrong for assuming that they can't think stole it. No, I I that's think, not what you know they what? were going for. Oh, what do you think they were going for, Dedge? The, the whole setup was like, well, this is just one huge misunderstanding, but it doesn't come off as funny because they were being... A misunderstanding is only funny if both sides are suffering. Yep. And the kid... Okay, well, don't you see, Dedge? The kid feels all alone on Christmas Day day and he's so scared and everything that totally justifies him nearly murdering these people with billiard pools setting a woman's feet on fire forcing her to douse herself in freezing water and making her traverse around a field the of director, legos the director wanted to have his cake and eat it too again i think i i, I mean there's a great there's a great line from 
from Cartman in season uh, 19 of South Park that I love that which is like there you go Dan Mazur aka the director there you go Dan Mazur you have your cake go ahead eat it too but like, uh, okay. <laughs> but okay, here's the thing I- I do get it. We complain about Disney just doing the same thing over and over again, and we do ask for something to be different and stuff. And yes, this sequel is different from the other Home Alone movies. But the differences still have to make sense. Not not just make sense, they have to actually be pleasing to the eyes, ears, and all senses. This is not pleasing. Seeing relatively nice people get brutally injured is not pleasing. Unless they can actually take it. But no. No, 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 no. They are on a, the bout of a breakdown by the end of it. To the point where I'm wondering if Pam was actually considering murdering that kid. Considering how when Jeff uh, yells that the kid jumped off the balcony, she says, good. Like, damn. So, yeah. Because of this misunderstanding, they decide to just, okay, you know what, uh, but what are your parents? I, I'm home alone, alone. And I'm like, okay, so basically the Mackenzie's decide to call a truce and just take the kid to their house so that he can doesn't have to spend uh, the Christmas alone. I will give the movie this. It was interesting that for the first time they do acknowledge how wrecked the home gets in the wake of the climax here because yeah that for some reason home alone one never really does pay mind to the fact that the McAllister home got trashed big time in the climax this yes. one yeah it actually does get touched base on to the point where it said that ooh the kid's gonna get in trouble and so yeah the kid never so- get the satisfaction of seeing him get in trouble for it on screen damn it so yeah the kid uh spends the night at the McKenzie's house but that begs the question, where is the doll then? Turns out, da da da, it was actually the nephew that took the freaking doll. And then, for whatever reason that completely baffles me, the kid decides to throw the doll uh, uh, what, into the what, what air. What song were they playing when that happened? Da, dun, 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 I forgot. Dun, 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 dun. What, what's the name uh, of that song, Jova? It's that it's that song that was also in the previous movies. I forgot its name. It's a, it's a Christmas song. Yeah, I know. I just I, keep I, I forgot the name of the song. The I point can't is, I really remember the name of the song it, either. Regardless, though, this and then is the movie give... goes full Looney Tunes on us and has the characters jump on each other, trying their best to get to not let that doll fall into the floor. Carol of the course, bells. Sorry. And then, of course, it's Max who gets the doll. Uh, I guess this is supposed to be his redemption moment. I believe there's uh, explicitly one that says, Wow, who would have imagined that it was Max who saved Christmas? Uh, I think that's how the line went. It was either that or them thanking Ollie and like, No, God, because Ollie was the one who nearly wrecked that doll by throwing it. Yes. So basically, yeah. Um, this means that McKenzie's house is saved. Um... And then after that, the mom arrives, and they decide to get her back. To, and of course, she gets she brings him back to the house, and ha, ha, the house is completely destroyed for all the reasons we've already discussed. And Except then we the don't movie get the skips iconic... ahead. Oh, Kev, oh, sorry, Max. But uh, yeah, and like Jova said, Max doesn't get at least on screen doesn't get any repercussions for any of his antics because we immediately skip one year ahead in time. <laughs> And now we have this moment where both the Mackenzie and the um, uh, God uh, Max's, Max's family, mother and his father, who's played by Andrew Daly. Yeah. So, the, so now they're all friends, and they have this sweet uh And then it's good that we now spend our Christmas together and blah blah blah. So basically, they're trying to have a heartwarming ending, like Deji said, that is completely unearned. And that's basically how the movie ends. Yeah. No yeah. ifs, ands, or buts about it. Just we're but, all br- br- one big happy fam. And that was Home Sweet Home Alone, brought to you by the worst of humanity. So, yeah. That was a thing. Dej, what would be the next section? Favorite scene? Or No, no, no. We're not, we're not, we're not doing this. This doesn't earn it. I just, I just, holy crap. Wh- what is there even left to say? Exactly. Right. What a all right. stupid movie this is. All right, so final thoughts. Uh, Jova. Again, hey, you you know, I think I've realized what this reminds me of. School days. It's like, 
It's like a visual novel where the player specifically chooses the worst choices for each one, except, and I can't believe I'm going to say this in School Days' favor, unlike School Days, the characters don't get all the comeuppances that should be coming to them, essentially. Like, at least in School Days, the characters that had it coming more or less got what was coming to them. Here, Max pretty much gets away with being a crap, crap person, and uh, I guess depending on how you look at it, the McKendys do get away with breaking and entering mm -hmm. and sort of contributing to wrecking the house, but honestly, I guess I'm not too broken up about that because they suffered enough. But seriously, just though, they went with the worst possible decision along the way overall. And mind you, I could see an interesting idea where it turns out that the burglars are actually the ones who do end up, like, you know, making a truce and being there for the kid afterwards, but this needed much, much better execution than what we got. You know what's the sad part? John Hughes actually had, back in the day, an original idea for a Home Alone movie where the, where the thugs are the ones in the right. But he decided to scrap that idea because it was stupid. And yet, for whatever reason, the people who made this movie decided to pick up that idea. And as a result, John Hughes himself gets story credit in this movie, oh, despite being dead. Wow. Despite being dead. <laughs> so John Hughes gets story credit. Why do I get the feeling he's turning in his grave right now? Yeah, basically. Uh, well, Pedro, your final thoughts. My final thoughts is that this movie's stupid. This movie's garbage. This movie's a fucking atrocity. Nothing about this movie works. The characters are terrible. The jokes are not funny. The story makes no sense. The jokes are cringy. Oh, it's everything about this movie feels like a, a terrible, cynical cash. Everything about no, not, a, not a single thing about this movie is created with any intent to entertain anybody this was made out of fun then again considering the considering this is from the director of fucking dirty grandpa i guess i couldn't expect much <laughs> fuck fuck this movie so yeah is will we get more home alone movies on disney plus who knows considering people hated this one yeah, i'm guessing it's probably going to be a while before we get another one that's the thing. So. Fans and critics alike hated this one. Congrats! You did the rarity of getting people to agree. It has a 16% on Rotten Tomatoes. Guys, for all for all the differences we may have as people, we can all agree on something. Home Alone 6 fucking sucks. <laughs> yes. Maybe, every, maybe after. I love how... I love how the general consensus on Rotten Tomatoes side was essentially nobody's home. Basically. <laughs> all right, Benji, you're... I, I, I don't know what else to say. I think it's pretty obvious. Deji, final thoughts, please. You know, the whole point about Home Alone is a kid realizing that he messed up and what he values the most is family. Yep. Uh, but you're supp he's, the kid is allowed to have flaws, but they're not supposed to be the most... Bro unlikable pieces of crap that you actually want them to get hurt. Only to then have them turn heel face and turn at the last minute. And, like, the the two other parents who are just trying to get by, they're not terrible people. They're just in a bad situation. But then it's like, this doesn't feel ill funny. It just makes you sympathize with them. This movie completely misses the entire point of Home Alone. Granted, I'd say Home Alone 3 introducing terrorists was still bizarre, even though I liked that movie. But still, what? <laughs> what? What? I, 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 there is only one good thing I will say that they did right. It's a what? stupid thing, but I'll be like, okay, they at least got an explanation as to why... How a uh, home alone? Okay, okay. It, the execution was bad, but at least it's like the the old thing people were saying about Home Alone is, well, how would a new one work in this day and age in a world where cell phones exist? Yep. And they 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 gave it away. It's it's yep. not good, but at least they kind of try to acknowledge it instead of beat around the bushes as who cares. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. 
So that was Home Sweet Home Alone, aka, or as I like to call it, the 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 worst of mankind. So, all right. So that was okay. I hope you enjoyed this short little podcast. I think it's a very short movie. Deji, what are we doing next when it's just the uh, when when it comes to non Pokemon podcasts? Uh, I I don't I don't, I don't know. I honestly mm. don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll do another movie that came out this week. Something about resurrecting from its grave. I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Uh, tune in next time for a podcast of Matrix Resurrections. So, see you then. Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye. Merry, Merry Christmas. <laughs>